What up everyone? So you're probably looking for a new laptop and you're considering the Dell XPS but when you google Dell XPS you see so many stories about people having quality control issues and now you're probably thinking is this even worth my hard-earned money? Well don't worry because I got you guys covered because in this video I'm going to be addressing the five most common problems that people are facing with their XPS. I'll be using my XPS that I bought back in September as an example to whether or not I personally face these issues. Hopefully by the end of this video, you have your mind made up on whether or not the XPS is worth your hard earned money. Number one most common problem that you guys are probably already worried about is the trackpad issue. Now there's so many stories about the trackpad being loose and it rattling and wobbling. Now Dell released a statement as of June 23rd, 2020. They stated, Dell is aware that some XPS 159500 customers might be experiencing a rattle or wobble issue with the touchpad. We have identified and resolved this issue on all systems shipping in June 2020 and beyond. While functionality is not affected, it does not meet the stringent quality and experience standards we set for ourselves. If you purchase an XPS 159500 prior to June 1st, contact Dell Technical Support for your country. The palm rest will need to be replaced. Okay, so in that case, my laptop should be perfectly fine, right? Since I did buy this laptop in September 2020, which the last time I checked, September does come after June. As you guys can see, there is still a wobbling issue at the corners and it's pretty noticeable. So when Dell said that they identified and resolved the issue for all laptops purchased beyond June 2020, that is not the case because the issue is still here. Another thing I wanted to point out is this dead zone on the trackpad. In this area at the top, it does not register your clicks or scrolls. This area is very stiff and does not move at all. I'm guessing this is a joint between the trackpad and laptop. And I just wish that joint was raised about half an inch higher so the entire trackpad could be usable. Now is this issue something that you should be worried about? It does wobble and rattle on the sides, but in my opinion, it doesn't really bother me that much because you can still scroll and click just fine. Most of the time, I'm using my MX Master 3 mouse, which is a really, really great mouse. If you guys are interested, I did a review on this, which you guys can check out. So anyways, I don't think a wobbly trackpad alone should stop you from buying the XPS, but I get it. This laptop is $1,000 to $2,000 and you expect it to be perfect, which is far from being perfect. So just something to take in consideration. Number two most common issue is the coil whining. In case you guys don't know, coils in a laptop acts like inductors to help stabilize the electric currents running through your laptop. So if you're running a high demanding application like gaming or editing a video, the coils will act in overdrive and possibly there may be a high pitch whining sound. Dell is notorious for shipping laptops with the coil wine issue, so this is a very legit excuse for not buying the Dell XPS. So let's go back to my laptop and test out the coil. For this experiment, I'm going to be exporting a 3GB video from Premiere Pro. The coil should be acting in overdrive since this is a big file, so let's give this a listen. My laptop is pretty loud, but for the most part, it sounds normal. I don't hear a high pitch whiny noise. I've exported dozens of videos in the past and played Warzone on this for hours, and I've never heard any high pitch whining sound, so I'm pretty confident to say that my laptop does not experience this issue. Now, is this something that you should be worried about? Yes, because a coil whine is almost impossible to fix. And that's because the materials are soldered on the motherboard, so altering it will almost likely damage the hardware and void your warranty. You can manage the whining sound by not running high demanding applications, but that just pretty much defeats the purpose of having a laptop, right? If you end up buying a Dell XPS and do experience a coil whine issue, you have 30 days to return it. If you want to exchange it instead of returning it, 
Dell's exchange policy is a little annoying. It states, Per the warranty agreement on the Dell sales site, the customer agrees to troubleshoot the computer issues with Dell technical support. No system exchange will be offered until we make at least three attempts to fix the issues through online troubleshooting or parts replacements. Come on Dell, if a customer wants to exchange an item, let them exchange it with no questions asked. I feel like they're just making it complicated for no reason given the fact that Dell's quality control isn't the best. They should really just honor the customer's requests. Common problem number three, people are experiencing loud popping and crackling noises when they play audio at a very high volume. Alright, let's go back to my laptop to test this out. I'm going to be playing some music at max volume and let's listen closely to see if there's any crackling or popping noises. Just a warning, this is going to be loud so if you're going to be wearing headphones, you should probably take them off. Did you guys hear any crackling noises? I didn't hear anything so I'm confident to say that my laptop does not experience this sound issue. If you do experience this problem, there's many reasons behind this. It can be as simple as an outdated sound driver or it can be as complicated as a hardware issue like a bad wiring or a bad connection. If your sound drivers are up to date and you still experience this issue, then most likely you're going to have to return your XPS and get a new one. Should you be worried about this before buying an XPS? I would say it's low risk because from my research, I noticed that a lot of these complaints came from older XPS models like from 2-3 to three years ago. From my experience, I have no problems with my Dell XPS so I'm thinking that the 2020 to 2021 model should be perfectly okay. Number 4. Laptop does not stay closed when it's at a 90 degree angle. Now this does not sound like a big deal, but it really is because when you put your laptop in your backpack, it's going to be at a 90 degree angle. And if it's not closed all the way, that means other objects that's in your backpack can slip through that crack and damage your screen. Let's close the screen on my laptop and hold it up at a 90 degree angle and let's see if it stays closed. So far so good. I can confidently say that my laptop does not have a hinge issue. So should you be concerned about this issue? I would say yes because in order to fix this problem, you need to take apart the laptop. And once you take apart the laptop, you really have to understand the mechanics of that screen and how it flips up and flips down. So bottom line, you really have to understand what you're doing. Dell does offer a one year in-house tech support. So if you do experience this issue, I would recommend calling a technician rather than doing it yourself if you're not so tech savvy. And last but not least, common issue number 5. Your screen brightness locks and no matter what you do, it just won't adjust. Going back to my laptop one last time, I've been adjusting the screen brightness over and over again and it's completely fine. The brightness key does its job and everything works okay. So should this problem stop you from buying the XPS? For my research, I would say no because this seems like a very minor issue which can be solved if you just update your drivers. So if you contact Dell or go on their website, you should be able to have access to their latest Intel graphics driver and if you download the updated driver, it should fix your problem. So I wouldn't worry about this too much. That's it for the 5 most common problems. One last thing that I wanted to point out is to pay attention to the pricing. Because when I bought my XPS for $1500, I thought that $1500 paid for that laptop by itself. I didn't know that there's extra add-ons that was included in that price. As you guys can see, they charge $43 for 12 months of antivirus protection, $59 for on-site tech support, $43 for a C-cell battery, which I'm totally fine with that one, but the subscription and the tech support charges, I wish they were more transparent with that. 
maybe some people don't want it. Like for me, if I had known, I wouldn't have bought the 12 month antivirus protection. So if you're about to buy the XPS and you don't want any of these add-ons, then contact customer support and see if you can remove any of these extra costs. That's it for this week's video. If you have any more questions, leave your questions in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. If this video helped you out, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.